The Three Reasons for VLAN Design. By the time you're done here, you will understand the three reasons why you would consider creating VLANs. Three. Only three. <laughs> and I emphasize that because you'll find out quickly if you go to Google and search for what VLAN should I create or VLAN best practices, there are no rules for VLAN. There's just guideposts. People saying, well, here's some of the reasons you might do that. And any time you see something like that, a system where there are no rules, you need to create rules for yourself. You might be going, well, what do you mean, Jeremy? Well, what I mean is I've seen a lot of network environments, and I'll get there, and there's just VLAN mess. VLANs everywhere. VLANs, some aren't even being used anymore. They're just scattered about. And I'll be talking to the network admin, and they're like, well, yeah, you just kind of, you know, they kind of... They realize their VLANs are a mess, but halfway through the conversation, we'll spark an idea, and he's like, oh, uh, yeah, let's create a VLAN for that. I'm like, you're a man unhinged. You're running without any rules. Don't just create VLANs. Know the reason you're creating VLANs, and then design it. Don't just add a VLAN for the moment. You're making the mess worse. There's a saying that says, if you just slow down for a minute, you can go a lot faster. The best VLAN designs that I've seen are the simplest. Thus my rule, keep it simple. Here are the three reasons you would create VLANs. Security, scalability, and treatment. That's it. If you have 53 different rooms in your business, don't create 53 VLANs because it would be cool if the VLAN number matched the room. That has nothing to do with security, scalability, and treatment. If you have different people groups at your company, well, there's the receptionist and the salespeople and the accountants. You don't create VLANs for those different departments unless those different departments have different security, scalability, and treatment. Now, right about now, you might be thinking, what do you mean by that? Good question. Let me explain. Security. It is virtually impossible to secure different ports on the same switch. Now, there's a concept of private VLANs, and there's other methods that have been introduced to try and help with that. But for the most part, everybody realizes if you have two devices connected to the same network and they're in the same VLAN, the only protection those two devices have from each other is on the device itself, like if you install a device-based firewall. So if this computer gets infected with ransomware, he becomes evil and now has full access to take out that computer right there. I will lock your files, give me Bitcoin. Now don't hear me say that every single computer should be in its own VLAN. No, different genres of computers should be in their own VLAN. For instance, if I have a genre of managed devices and a genre of BYOD devices, those have two completely different security standards. Ransomware of death, fully protected. Maintained. Wall those guys off. That's security. Or perhaps you have a server sitting there plugged in. And you happen to be on a school campus where <laughs> students are all hackers because they have nothing better to do. Again, you put those two devices on the same VLAN, server over here and devices over here, and you have to rely on server-based firewall methods to keep those devices from accessing it. No, 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 no. Security wall right there. Block the student devices from reaching the server without passing through some level of filtering. Let me go back to the example I just gave you a moment ago of the departments at a company. I mentioned the salespeople and the accounting people. And some of you might have said, well, accounting people, don't they deal with secure files? And, you know, the salespeople really want to know what that person is making. So they'll try and tap into the accounting people PCs. Uh, maybe. Slim chance, though, because just about everything we do nowadays is cloud-based. Even if you have servers on site, you'll keep it on the server. And if you're managing your devices, most of the time you'll have no problem with the sales devices combining with the accounting devices. And some of you might be thinking, well, won't they print stuff to the accounting printer? You know, as kind of like a practical thing, like accounting prints checks. What We don't want them to, you know, what? no, no, no. You're not thinking of VLANs in that case. You're thinking about printer group policies or something in the Microsoft world that keeps the accounting printer from showing up on the salespeople PCs. Oh, but maybe that's a good point. Take that accounting printer. Maybe the printer and only the printer should be in its own VLAN. A lot of the printers have that Apple Bonjour protocol that just makes it show up for people. If you don't manage them well, <laughs> I'm staring at that. that. That's supposed to be a printer, not a gravestone or anything like that. But regardless, that might be a reason to separate printers into another VLAN. There's more examples I could give, but I think you got the idea. Now, what about the second one, scalability? Well, this primarily deals with IP addressing. Now, there are some misnomers around scalability, and I want to debunk those right now. Back in the day, I mean, back in the old day, 20-some years ago, 
people would say, you have to separate computers when there's too many of them because those computers will send broadcast traffic. And the more broadcast traffic they send, the slower and slower all the other computers on that segment go because they have to process the broadcasts. <laughs> I remember saying that 20 years ago when I was teaching network technology 20 years ago. I'm old. And the problem is people still say that today. Well, I have a secret for you. Technology has progressed. Our processors are bigger than they used to be 20 years ago. And handling broadcast traffic from other devices is way easy for our modern processors. To the point where you can grow these things to 500, 1,000, even more devices on a given segment. And that's what a lot of people do nowadays is create very large VLANs. But even with these 500 and 1,000 device segments, you can still end up with a crazy amount of devices. It's because everybody nowadays is a walking device. They have smartphones, they have tablets, they have laptops, they have wireless thermostats and microwave ovens and refrigerators. IP addresses just get gobbled up. So when you run out of IP addresses on a given VLAN, you can add more VLANs to increase the scalability of the network. Now we will get a little bit more into subnetting later on, but I do want to emphasize, don't do what I've seen people do and then just like, well, forget that. I'm tired of scalability. I'll just throw 10.1.0.0 slash 16 at the network. 65,536 IP addresses available on that segment. That's eh, a little too far. And it's not because the devices can't handle that many, although I would question if they really could. It's more so that you're getting lazy with your subnetting. And if you have any growth in the future, you're soon going to find yourself running out of IP addresses to use. Other scalability scenario that I'll throw at you for right now is with the modern WAN connection. Let's say we've got a data center sitting right here that's connected to a shared segment. Maybe that's Metro E, connecting all your different buildings. Well, you have a single or dual fiber connection coming in here, and you want to segment that out to where you have one dedicated link per building. Well, that's coming right into an Ethernet interface. So VLAN. Create small little VLANs allowing point-to-point -point connectivity over that Metro E cloud thus scaling that single link with the ability to connect to many different sites. The last reason you would create VLANs, treatment. And there's many different things this could categorize. The most common being voice over IP. You've got your IP phones that you want to have a higher quality of service than all the other devices on the network. Well, it's really easy to do that if you segment them into their own VLAN because when you get to the throttle points in the network, which could be those trunk links or the uplinks between switches and routers and everything else, but most often, it's the WAN connection. Super easy quality of service to just say, this segment, this VLAN, this subnet gets a higher level of quality of service. But quality of service isn't the only thing that I mean when I'm talking about treatment. I've run into many different scenarios where you might have a subnet. Let's just take a school, for example. You've got student devices that are connecting to the uh, wireless network there. And the school wants those student devices to have content filtering. That's a type of treatment. For this segment, you might want to assign different DNS servers. One of the most common types of content filtering is using DNS-based content filtering, where you assign all these devices a DNS server that restricts different kinds of website access. Throw some firewall rules up there to say that's the only DNS servers you can use in case you get those smart students that are like, I can manually change my DNS server. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah, joke's on you, buddy. That VLAN gets a different treatment. We don't let people on that VLAN use a different DNS server. You can tell I've dealt with a few kids that have done that. That's it. Three reasons. So when you're thinking about what VLAN should I create, always come back to those three points. Security, scalability, and treatment. If it's not for one of those three things, don't create a VLAN. And keep in mind, this is just the beginning as we explore rolling out the VLANs for the VIA network environment.